Welcome to another episode of Three Questions and a Laugh, a new program where I have a chance to talk to really interesting people about really interesting topics, and then I ask them to share a joke, a laugh, a funny story, something to bring a smile to your face during these challenging times. My guest today is a, a longtime friend and really an expert in the area of loyalty marketing. Phil Rubin is the founder of Our Dialogue, which is now a Bond brand loyalty company, just was merged with them. He is considered by many to be one of the foremost experts in consumer loyalty and what's happening in the mindset of consumers and how they interact with brands. Phil, welcome to the program. Thank you, Craig. It is great to see you and be here. It's great to see you, my friend. So let, your topic's gonna be about loyalty. You know, a lot has changed. The world has changed, COVID has changed, but the way brands are interacting with consumers has changed probably, probably permanently. And so let's, let's dig into what loyalty might look like today, tomorrow, and in the future with the foremost expert in loyalty marketing. How's that sound? Is he joining us too? <laughs> he will be here soon. So you're, <laughs> you're, you're filling the gap for him right now. I'm his stunt double. He's stunt double. So let's, let's start at the macro view. Question number one, sort of the, the, the new world order of loyalty. What are the new expectations that are out there in the marketplace now, both maybe for consumers and from brands? Well, I think from, for consumers, loyalty is, is even more governed by things like safety and security, right? Because we're living in this unprecedented time, literally. Um, and, you know, to, to go to the grocery store, to get on an airplane, to go pick up lunch, uh, and certainly even to check into a hotel is very different than it, than it was. So the expectations really shifted towards dialing up brand trust, especially in an environment where the level of trust overall in government is really low. Edelman's done a lot of really good research on this. We at Bond have, have been tracking this as well. Uh, so you've got low levels, you know, business is trusted more than government and business is required to fulfill all kinds of consumer and business needs today. So really we think about this notion of safety and security being the new loyalty currency. You know, what it's done to, to brands is number one, accelerated a lot of trends that were already in place. Digital is now digital acceleration. Uh, interestingly, one of the things that it's really accelerated and, and probably one of the bigger shifts is what we think of as a pivot to the customer. Now, there's a great Jeff Bezos quote who said, you can be a lot more innovative focusing on customers instead of competitors. And what brands have had to do in terms of reacting to what's happened is to sort of ignore that they don't have the luxury or, or the excuse to focus on competitors. So they've got to figure out what do they do for the customer? What do they do to keep their employees safe and working? And, and how do they just keep the business alive in, in, in so many categories? And then the last, the, the last piece of it is the emotional context is so intense now, partly because if you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, everybody sort of shifted even regardless of economic status, down to physiological safety and security. And, and so that's one, that, that and digital were things that were happening already. Those have really accelerated in what's gone on. So if safety and security and, and trust are the new loyalty currencies, who's getting it right? What are some of the best practices out there that, you, that you've seen? Well, as somebody who actually bought the URL Amazonification and has spent a lot of time studying what Amazon has, has done, you know, with their customer obsession and their whole day one thing, I never thought I would say this, but I think actually Walmart's done an amazingly good job. Uh, number one, because they're essential. Number two, because they recognize the need to provide this safety, safe and secure experience. They did things like immediately, and it ties back to digital acceleration, they shifted to contactless payments within like the first couple of weeks of the lockdown. Truly remarkable. They're working on an answer to Amazon Prime. Um, they came out, I think, last week or the week before as a retail leader and said masks are required. And so they've done well. P 
Panera, who we just did that CRMC webinar. You know, they've done things, not only digital acceleration in terms of the ordering and pickup and contactless and delivery, but they pivoted and, and offered grocery, which was hugely important when there were all these stockouts at, at grocers. And maybe we'll come back to that. I think you know, Trader Joe's and Whole Foods have also, you know, in the grocery category done really well in terms of their health and safety standards and, and doing things like opening early for seniors. What they haven't done, what I think would have been really interesting is if, say, Whole Foods, because of their focus on Amazon Prime customers, actually had a members only hour right after their senior hour, but they haven't done that. So they've done well. Apple, of course, has been super smart. And then there's some small brands that have, have done some really smart and interesting things going back to the beginning, going through to today. Well, I think that's part of it too, is you don't have to be a big person or a big boy or girl to, to survive in this, that the smaller, more nimble organizations may even be better positioned, which will be interesting to see. So you know Premier is a technology consulting firm, and so that is an area of particular interest to us. Third question, final question for Phil Rubin. What, what role does technology play or will technology play, do you think, in the future of the loyalty space? Well, it's sort of hard to think about a business today that is not you know, f fundamentally driven by technology, if not uh, that being beyond essential. So when you think about some of these trends that we're seeing like digital acceleration, and everything shifting from physical to digital and remote and virtual. And, you know, in our house where we <clears throat> might have two or three people on a Zoom call at once, technology is that much more critical, but especially the business that you guys are in and the value of data, uh, not just for marketing and customer experience, which of course it's beyond important and, 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 and even more important than it was because all the insights that brands had have changed because consume, you know, customer, you know, habits, all our habits have been disrupted. But the notion of distributed computing and distributed data and cloud migration, because we're not necessarily going to be in the office managing our servers anymore. Uh, you know, it, it, it can't be understated and and the challenge with so many new data sources you think about something as basic as a local restaurant who has had to pivot to online ordering delivery integration and all the data that exists now in addition to the old table management and point of sale it's it's exponentially challenging so the ability to manage that the ability to you know, in the case of Premier, migrate it to, to a place where it's usable, not just for insights and analytics, but it's, it's got to be usable in real time for production and operations. You know, I've tried to buy a stand-up desk for like three weeks now, and I can't even order, I can't even, you know, I'm making orders and they keep getting canceled because the inventory is wrong on, you know, from, on the e-commerce application, much less when you get to actually it being fulfilled and you're relying on a shipping carrier or a, an intermediary like Narvar. So I think you guys are, are well positioned to be incredibly helpful for a lot of companies. Well, we appreciate that. It, it certainly is a, a key enabler no matter what's going on, but today technology is gonna continue to play a critical role. So you've made it through the gauntlet of the three questions. Now, now, for, the, now for the laugh, a joke, a funny story, something that will show your great sense of humor and bring a smile to people's faces. So uh, I'm all ears, friend. Well, you know, there's so many, uh, this, is, this is absolutely the hardest part and even thinking about joining you today. Um, but I, I gave it a lot of, well, enough thought, not maybe not a lot of thought. Um, and this isn't mine, I stole this off of a friend's Instagram, but uh, an epidemiologist, an ICU doctor and a scientist walk into a bar. Just kidding, they know, they know better than to walk into a bar. <laughs> Look at that. A very timely, relevant uh, joke. I love it. Well, you gotta, we got to stay relevant. Um, well done. Well not done, that it's that friend. funny, but it's, it's sort of funny. It's perfect. It was perfect. So as were you. So thank you so much for making the time. Good luck in your continued transition and appreciate all you're doing to uh, move the loyalty needle further ahead for these companies. Thanks so much, Craig. It's uh, super fun to see you and be with you here today. Likewise. Take care. You too. Thanks.